One of the biggest keys to consistently smash your goals and be productive is to reward yourself for making progress. But how do you reward yourself correctly without self-sabotaging and without losing your motivation and your drive? In this episode, I'm going to break down four simple things you can do to reward yourself correctly for making progress and being productive. So let's jump right in. Before we talk about these four ideas, let's talk about that you should reward yourself. So often you feel guilty about enjoying the life we've built. We feel guilty about doing something fun for ourselves. We feel guilty about taking time off. But what gets rewarded gets repeated. I mean, our brain just loves those little dopamine spikes. That's, keep, that's keeping us going. So you need to reward yourself for more success because success only builds upon success. So if you never celebrate, if you never acknowledge your progress, you won't keep on going forward. So rewarding yourself is actually productive because it keeps up your future capabilities to earn and achieve more. So never feel guilty about celebrating your little wins. Never feel guilty about taking time off. It is necessary for long-term success. So now let's talk about those four simple ideas to consistently reward yourself. Number one, you want to set strategic milestones for your projects. So most people, they never take the time to really map out their projects. They don't dial in. What are the five moves I need to make to make this project a success? And obviously we can go a lot deeper and I teach it in my productivity accelerator blueprint that that's not what we're talking about here. So we want to determine what are the five moves to complete a certain project. And then you want to set rewards for each of these milestones. So let's talk about writing a book, for example. Well, there are five moves to write a book. As for every product, you can ever, every project can be broken down into five moves. So for writing a book, it might be doing your research. It might be writing the first draft. It might be then writing the full version, the finished it, then launching it and then scaling it, for example. It could be. Now, you want to set rewards for each of these moves. So you set out, okay, for two weeks, I'm going to do my research. And when that is done, I'm going to go out into nature. I'm going to go out and do this fun thing. I'm going to go out and take this trip, for example. And you want to do this for every of these five moves where you put a date in the calendar when something is going to get done. And then you put a date on rewarding yourself. And ideally, you're going to enroll others too. Because when you enroll others first, you get that thing done. Because if they're invested, they expect you to make progress and then secondly, you also create fun experiences for yourself and someone else. So for example, you could plan like a, a family trip to a new city. You could plan a date weekend with your partner. You could go to a concert or a theater with a friend. It doesn't match. But when you enroll others into the project and these milestones, they get excited. And now you get excited even more so set those milestones, set a reward, ideally enroll someone else in it too. So you have skin in the game and you're just getting so much more excited. I mean, when you talk to that friend and they know in two weeks, man, we're going to take that trip to Paris. They are pumped and you get even more pumped about it. So one of the key lessons to understand is that the anticipation of an event is often stronger than the event itself, which simply means you often get even more pumped, more excited about going on that trip than being on that trip itself. So you want to anticipate rewards. And that's why it's so important to put a date on them. And ideally, you're going to book them already. Like you set up that project and now you're going to book that trip to Paris or to a wellness retreat or to a theater or a concert. You're going to book that in advance, which makes it real, which makes it something that is going to happen. And now you've got skin in the game and you're going to get so pumped. 
about achieving this milestone and getting that reward. So key. Second key idea is you want to also reward yourself every single hour. So most people, they just don't reward themselves consistently for those small wins that they get. And they have these huge goals, these huge ambitions, but they never feel like they're making any progress. Here's the antidote to this. You celebrate something. You do something to reward yourself every single hour. So here's how I do this. Every single hour, I take a break for two to five minutes. And they've shown in studies that the most productive people work in sprints of 45 to 60 minutes. So take a break every hour. Then I get up, I move because we're not meant to sit for hours on end. And then I watch a video of a sports game for two to five minutes. I just do this for myself because I enjoy it. I like it. I love it. You can find your own way. You can find something that you enjoy doing in your breaks. But I do this every hour. And it might seem like a waste of time, but actually, here's what's happening in your brain. You start to work, link work with pleasure. So every time I sit myself down to work, I know I'm going to be able to watch a sports game in the break. And then I do another sprint. And I know there's going to be a reward afterwards. So I feel great about the effort I put in because I know, firstly, it's going to build my dream. But secondly, I get to do something fun in the moment. And so often, it's easy to fall into these distractions because they reward us immediately. But being productive oftentimes is not rewarding in the moment. So you want to make it rewarding so you repeat it and so you get pumped about getting to work. Even if you love your work, still do this. Then third key practice. You want to celebrate three wins at the end of each day. Do this in your planner, in your journal, on a piece of paper. I don't care. But every evening, I recommend that you write down three wins you had or five wins. That's even more powerful. But you want to think about what are some wins I had. Maybe you went out and worked out. You went to the gym. Maybe you ate healthy. Maybe you shot that video. Maybe you wrote, wrote on the book. It doesn't matter. The, sometimes the simpler the wins, the better. Because when you celebrate them, you feel good about yourself. You feel good about doing the right things. Like every day, I do some kind of workout. I do my yoga every morning. I do jump rope. And three times per week, I do my weightlift training. And when I celebrate that about myself, I learn to appreciate the simple things that I do right. Because there are tons of people who don't do this. They don't work out. But I do. For me, it feels normal. But when I celebrate the things that I feel like are normal, I actually give my sons that boost of confidence, that boost of feeling like I've got a win that most people don't have. So this is critical. You want to celebrate three to five wins every single evening. Let's do the math here real quick. If you celebrate five wins every single day, over the course of a month, you'll have over 150 wins. That will change your confidence. And now let's go even further. Let's say you celebrate five wins every single day for a year. You'll have over 1,800 wins and that will completely transform your confidence. Chances are that you're already achieving so much, that you're already doing so much, but you're not giving yourself any credit for it. So often we just see those people that are more successful than us, they've gotten there faster, and we are behind. But in actuality, we're achieving so much, and we're just not celebrating it. And then the last key idea. So you want to schedule taking time off. It needs to be baked into your calendar on a daily, weekly, and yearly basis. So let's deconstruct this. Every day, I get off work at 3 to 3.30 p.m. That's when I end work no matter what. And then I spend time with my family. Then I spend time with my partner. I spend time reading, learning, studying, growing. 
doing fun things for myself. I enjoy life. That needs to be baked into your calendar. Like I have this from 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. every day in my calendar. Now you don't need to take six hours. You can take two hours or three hours or one hour. But you need to take time off every single day. And then equally important also, get enough rest, get enough sleep. Vitally important. Second key idea, you want to do that on a weekly basis. So every week, take at least one or better two to three days off. And it might seem like you're getting behind. It might seem like you're wasting time. But in actuality, if you take time off, you come back so much more motivated, so much more driven, so much more ambitious. So it's key to actually enjoy the life that we're building and not just enjoy when we get success. The key is to enjoy it right now. So I have huge ambitions. I have huge dreams and I'm not there yet, not even close. But every day I take time off. Every week I take time off to just enjoy the life that I'm building because success, life success, always happens in the process. So don't wait that for that external event that changes everything. Enjoy the life that you're building right now because that event, it is not going to change your life because at that point you're realizing, well, I'm still miserable. I don't feel good about myself. So you set a new goal that is further away and you delay your happiness even more. And then thirdly, you want to schedule in advance your vacations for the entire year because that way you have to work your schedule around your vacations. And so often we set all these projects, all these goals, all these to-dos and now there is no time at all for our vacations. So they just get canceled. So they're just out of the way. And that's how you leave your vacations on the table. You, you never take them because you feel like there's so much to do, so much to achieve. And oftentimes you feel guilty about taking vacations, but it's actually super productive. So one of my favorite stories is simply this from one of my mentors, Robin Sharma. And he's a leadership coach who writes a lot of books. And he's like one of the, the favorite people of mine in the world. And he often teaches that you need to take time off. You need to take time off on a daily, weekly and yearly basis. Just what I taught you right now. And he does what he preaches. So for two months, almost every summer, he takes two full months off. He just enjoys trips and adventures with the family, reads a lot, studies a lot and just Enjoy his life. And what he says is that after he had taken those vacations, he comes back so driven, so motivated to write the next book, to do his next masterpiece. So I recommend that you see it that way too. When you come back, you're so driven, you're so motivated because you're renewed, you're recharged and you are eager to get back to work. Now you don't need to take two months off Maybe you can't afford that, but little days and sometimes weeks off can do wonders for your life and your productivity. So I recommend that you schedule that in on a daily, weekly and yearly basis. And then if you like this video then smash like, subscribe down below, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. And if you haven't met already, hi, I'm Enik Mats and I'm a leadership and life coach. And here on this channel, we talk about productivity, wellness, relationships, and just how to create a great life in general. So if you're into that, subscribe down below. Don't miss any of our future videos. And then I recommend that you watch one of these videos next. I think they will really serve you. And then until the next time, make sure that you live fully, live openly, and be the leader of your life.